Oklahoma Newsroom. This is an OSU update. I'm Jenny Carlson. Vincent Taylor, the defensive tackle for the Cowboys, is returning home for the Alamo Bowl, but he also returned home last year for the Sugar Bowl. Kyle Fredrickson joins us on the phone to explain what in the world's going on. Kyle, this is kind of a cool uh, side story to the Cowboys now going to San Antonio for this year's bowl game. Tell us, uh, tell us about these connections. Yeah, how crazy is that? You know, it was uh, last year I was lucky enough to go actually visit the childhood home of Vincent Taylor. Uh, grew up uh, near the Ninth Ward in, in New Orleans, and his family was relocated because of Katrina. And sure enough, uh, the Cowboys' next bowl destination, going back to where his second home is in San Antonio, uh, as he was a high school standout at, at Madison High School uh, in that region. So uh, for Taylor, you know, uh, it's been both cases. You know, he's he's had family at these big games. Um, you know, last year for him, uh, he had a big stack on, on Ole Miss's quarterback early in that game, even did the, the land shark symbol above his helmet to kind of get the crowd riled up, uh, you know, in a, in a game that had a, only a few highlights for OSU and a, and a pretty tough loss. Uh, but this time around, you know, he, he's going back to a place where really established himself as a, as a standout high school prospect. Um, so whether it be just coaches or, or former classmates, uh, and even family who still resides in that area, uh, definitely a, a special time for, for him and, and the whole uh, Taylor clan. You know, Kyle, uh, highlights, uh, you mentioned highlights become sort of a standout in high school, did Vincent Taylor. Highlights are usually pretty hard to come by when you're a defensive tackle. Not a lot of uh, a highlight film uh, plays out there for you. That was not the case for Vincent Taylor this year. He obviously was up for the Peisman Award given to a lineman who does something crazy athletic, which we saw on several occasions for Vincent Taylor. Uh, now it seems like sort of, you know, you talk about the name he made for himself in high school in San Antonio. Now people are wondering, has he made a big enough impact as a college defensive tackle to now make the next move up to the NFL? Where does, where does his draft stock lie at this point? Well, you know, I think at this point he's in the process of getting that evaluation back from the NFL competition committee to sort of evaluate just how high his stock might be. You know, I don't, I'm not sure at this point that he's a necessarily a first or a second round prospect, but with some of the plays that we say, saw him made him make this year with that Heisman Trophy finalist, uh, you know, performances, blocking extra points and, and playing option quarterback, you know, that's got to get the eye of a lot of these NFL scouts in terms of a guy who's athletic enough to really chase down these quarterbacks and physical enough to be a run stopper. And, and we've really seen that from Vincent Taylor this year. Of course, he didn't win the Peisman Trophy. Um, you know, it's about as uh, controversial as a vote as you'll get next to the presidential election, uh, <laughs> being that uh, what, what he did was pretty, pretty spectacular. Uh, but he was very humble about it when he returned to Stillwater, talking about how much uh, the trip to New York just meant to him, just to be able to go out there and to be in consideration uh, to kind of get, get to the big city for the first time. I know it was a special experience for him. But, yeah, this is, a, this is another chance for him to really show NFL scouts what he's made of. Uh, and if he has a real big performance and, and his uh, draft stock starts to rise a little bit, I don't think it's all out of the question that he might be a, one of those guys who declares a little bit early. Well, yeah, Kyle, that was going to be my last question. You know, sometimes we see, you know, I think back even to a long time ago, like a guy like Plaxico Burris has a huge bowl game, and suddenly he goes from unknown to, you know, off the charts he's gone and, and has a you know really great NFL career. Uh, can a defensive lineman have that kind of impact, or is Vincent Taylor a little bit different in sort of a maybe a bowl game bump for NFL draft stock just because – he does have the ability to block extra points, field goals, do some things that maybe are a little bit different. Does that separate him and sort of up that possibility at all? Yeah, it's hard to say because we, you know, we thought that might be the case when uh, you know, we saw James Castleman a couple years ago in the Cactus Bowl uh, rumbling down the field on offense just with how athletic and incredible that was. You know, we thought he might be a guy who got drafted, but at this point you know, I don't know that he's been able to stick around on an NFL roster so it's yet to be seen. Uh, you know, the one thing I, that we do know is he's going to have his work cut out against uh, for him in this game, uh, going up against a quarterback like Seth Oliafau, who has uh, quite a few rushing yards this season, is a mobile and strong quarterback, really not that different than, than a Mason Rudolph. So, you know, if, if we're going to go off of, of one game, uh, how his draft stock's uh, going to rise, I think that might be a stretch. But, you know, the more tape he can get uh, and the more crazy athletic things he can do, uh, it's certainly going to help, and being the, the trickeration that we've seen from this OSU team in past years in these bowl games, uh, I wouldn't be all that surprised if we see him in the uh, possibly in the backfield 
uh, on offense for, uh, for a play or two in this one. Let's remember that Mote Miley, his uh, defensive tackle teammate, has played some in the, in the backfield already. And I know, and you know it too, Kyle, Vincent Taylor would jump at the chance to play some offense. We'll see if that happens. The Cowboys uh, are on the, uh, back on the field December 29th down at the Alamo Bowl, kickoff at 8 p.m. Be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.